Hey developers, today we are gonna look at the top 10 programming books of all time. So some of these books you may have heard of, some of them you may not have heard of, but most of them are classics that almost all computer science students, most developers should read at some point because they have some universal truths that haven't changed in many, many years. So make sure you guys check out this video all the way to the end. I actually even have a bonus book for you and if you guys are interested in any of these books, I put a link in the description below with all these links for all these books. So click on them. If you do buy something, I get a few bucks. I appreciate it. But yeah, let's, uh, let's go and start the video. I want to just take a moment and thank our sponsor, Dot Tech Domains. Now, when you're looking for a domain name, you're looking for a domain name usually that is short, relevant, and available. And the nice thing about the Dot Tech Domain is that it's broad enough to really cover anything in the technology space. So that's why I think the .tech domain is really perfect for any project that you guys are working on in the future, be it business or personal. In fact, I put my personal website, viewcourse.tech, on .tech domain names, and I love it. A lot of huge companies and a lot of personal projects are done on .tech domains. For example, viacom.tech, ces.tech, pearl.tech, AustinEvans.tech. A lot of people are using .tech domain names. You guys got to check it out. I put a link in the description. If you go to go.tech slash Eric, you can get up to 80% off one year and five year domains. So go to go.tech slash Eric and get up to 80% off on your domain names. Thanks. All right. We are looking at the 10 best programming books of all time. Now these books are books that haven't been released recently. Many of them aren't. Some of these books are like 20 years old, but I think that's actually amazing because a lot of the truths in these books still hold true today. So things that we saw 20 years ago are still happening today. So that's why these are pretty much classics. And I think if you are a software developer, web developer, at least take a look at some of these books. I wouldn't say you need to read them all but to at least understand what they are about, what the ideas are in them, I think that's gonna really help you in the long term in your career. And also, if you disagree with any of, any of my choices here, then leave a comment below. I'd love to see a comment of some really cool programming books that you guys like and you know which ones have helped you. You know, I am an author myself. I've written a couple of books, which I'll have a link in the description below. And so I, I really appreciate other authors who write great books. It really inspires me. Also, by the way, all these books, I will have links in the description below for all of them. They are affiliates, so if you end up, they are affiliate links, meaning if you buy any of them, I do get a couple bucks. I appreciate it. But let's, uh, let's begin. All right, the first book that I want to talk about is Design Patterns. So this is by Eric Gamma, Richard Helm, Ralph Johnson, and John Vlissidis. I'm pr probably not pronouncing that right. But Design Patterns is a classic book. It's really brought the idea of there are these common patterns that we see in development and programming that are common to really all programming languages that we can reuse everywhere and that make a lot of sense. These things are like singleton or MVC patterns, um, factory patterns, these patterns that that make a lot of sense and that we can reuse in a lot of different places. So sometimes you may hear, hear this book called The Gang of Four that came together. And when I was in college, this was like one of the books that they, they taught me, like you need to learn design patterns. And as I've become a, a better programmer, I don't usually reach for the design patterns all the time, but it's good to know that they exist. And then sometimes it's good to know um, where to pull them from. And oftentimes, like frameworks that we use today are using these patterns underneath the hood that we don't even know about. They might be using a model view controller pattern, which is in some ways um, taken directly from this book. Uh, so I, I think it's an important book to read. It is an older book. It is harder to read. If you are looking for an easy read, this is probably not it, but it gives you an idea of some some good principles that you should follow. In addition, there is other design pattern books. So if you don't want to, to buy this one, I would look at, there's a JavaScript one, JavaScript design patterns that came out a few years ago that has been highly recommended. 
that's another one that uh, I would look at too. And by the way, this is in no particular order. Keep that in mind. The second one is Clean Code by Rob, Bar Rob Martin. So this is a pretty good book. He actually has three books on this, and I've added a couple onto this list. Um, the third one I didn't add because I just haven't read it, and I was running out of space. But this just tells you like the differences between good and bad code, how to write good code, how to transform bad code into good code, like like good naming functions, like classical things that you should understand when you start writing code. So after you've learned the basics of, of JavaScript, for example, how do you write JavaScript that's clean? Like, how do you, how can you look at your code and, and what they call code smells? You could see like, ooh, this is probably not a good pattern. This is probably not a good way to write this. Well, if you read something like clean code, you can start kind of understanding those patterns and those things that you should be doing, like how to name classes, how to write functions, how to format your code for maximum readability. I mean, a lot of times when we talk about clean code, people just bring about, talk about like dry, don't repeat yourself, but there's a lot more to it. And the, these practices are kind of universal. It doesn't matter what programming language you're using. This is something you probably should learn. And also even touches on like unit testing and practice test driven development. Let's move on to Code Complete 2. Uh, so this is another one that just gives you a lot of practical examples and kind of guides to programming. It's as the tagline says, it's widely considered one of the best practical guides to programming. I read this a while back. I only read about half of it, but I still think it's a classic. It's a little dry. It's it's going to take you a little while to get through, but it really points out, you know, what you sh how you should write the, write code, some of the best practices, and um, it can, it kind of has a lot of different scenarios too. And some of it's some of the codes in there is object oriented programming, OOP style. Some of it's classical, um, functional that is. So I, you know, this is widely regarded in one of the best programming books out there. I found it a little dry, but it might be right up your alley if that's what you're interested in. So Mythical Man Month is a book of essays of different kind of uh, software, it's essays on different software engineering examples that happened. Um, one of the classical ones is references back to IBM and how they were dealing with um, a code base that was changing and they needed to uh, have people fix it. And there was this idea that when a project goes over its allotted time, that you could just kind of throw more engineers at it to fix it. And that has been known to actually do the opposite. So if you're, one of your projects is behind, you can't just throw more engineers at it to fix it because every time you add a new engineer, you have now another person that you have to keep in the loop. There's more communication that's needed. There's more complexity that occurs. And there's kind of this diminishing results where more engineers actually make things take longer. And so that was like one of the ex classical examples in this book. So it, it's pretty interesting. Um, there's also the, the idea some project managers think that if you take nine women and put them in one room, you can make a baby in one month. So those kind of ideas, like we need to, uh, you, when you run a, a software engineering shop, you have to be very careful of how tax, tasks are broken down and when things take longer than they're expected, it's not as easy as you think to get it back on track. So, the, you know, the classic examples, this is 20 years old. I've run into this just recently with different projects and I think it's a, a good book to at least skim over. The Pragmatic Programmer, Dave Thomas, Andrew Hunt. And actually, I didn't realize this until I looked this up. My buddy had just read this version. It's the 20th anniversary edition came out recently and it even has some new chapters. Um, this is a really easy read. Once again, it kind of deep dives into like practical examples of how you work in a software development company. In fact, it gives you not just advice on how to write your code, but also how to work with coworkers, how to deal with projects and project man managers. It's really a, a great guide on, on software development and it hits some of those what they call soft skills. And if and it's a really easy read, I would say I'd highly recommend picking this up just to to flip through and and you can read it in in a couple of days and just kind of get all everything 
that it has to offer and kind of makes you think too about these different scenarios. Cracking the Coding Interview, I have this book. I have, I have most of these books. Uh, this Cracking the Coding Interview is one that you know I highly recommend if you're looking to get a job at a company. Sometimes they're called Fang Jobs, Facebook, Apple, Google, these jobs that require a coding interview that might include a whiteboarding interview that includes algorithm questions. So you might have to write a merge sort or quick sort, and it's never that easy, trust me. But you're going to have these kind of logic problems that you need to solve. And this book, the half the book is explaining what these different algorithms are, like all these different search algorithms, all these different like different trees, things like that. And then the second half of the book is all about actual programming problems you might see while you're at a job. So uh, at a job in coding interview. So what you, and then even gives you, I think it gives you beginner, medium, and hard problems. So it's, it's pretty nice. I think it has 189 programming questions and solutions and they, this book has been continuously been updated a bunch of times. It's on the sixth edition already. I would highly recommend this just to grab it if you're starting to, to go down that path. There's a lot of free resources for coding interview questions. There's a lot of paid services. So I think this is maybe just one of probably many resources you probably want if you are really serious about getting a job. But this, uh, this, this is great because it also tells you like what you should expect, you know, how you approach an interview, and then it goes into like how to solve these problems. And, uh, and Gail Lackman McDowell, I think she was a recruiter for, for Google and Apple and a bunch of other places. So she's been at these companies. She knows what you'll expect to see, and she explains, you know, what you need to do to, to, to solve them. So JavaScript, the good parts, I w was wavering if I wanted to put this on here, but I really think it's one of the classics. It's a little bit old. I don't think he's actually ever, Douglas Crockford hasn't actually made an update for this in a while, but it still has a really, um, a whole lot of good information in it. I mean, you're not going to see the latest ES6 fat arrow functions in here, but you will see a lot of good, good information on just like how JavaScript works, closures, um, scopes, um, how how different variables work and kind of things to keep in mind. I think as JavaScript kind of has a bad reputation of of not being a great language because there is some things in JavaScript that are probably the bad parts, but I, I think this book really, even though it's quite a few years old, is a, a good overview of what the good parts are and, and I, I would recommend it. Now, The Clean Coder, this is the second book that I'm, I put on this list by Robert Martin. And the reason I did that is because he has one called Architecture, A Clean Architecture. I haven't read that, so I don't want to recommend it. But this one I have, and this one is almost a little bit of a combination of writing clean code, but it's more focused on the person. So what it means to be a true software craftsman, how to deal with conflict, tight schedules, how to get the flow of coding, how to handle unrelenting pressure, Avoid burnout, how to combine enduring attitudes and new development paradigms. So it's kind of like how you become a professional programmer. And I, I don't think there's enough books on this. I've only, I know uh, of a few, the Ultimate Software Development Career Guide by John Sonmez is one of them. But I, I, think, I think, you know, just at least kind of getting Robert Martin's ideas of how to do these things is a good idea. And it makes you think a little bit. You know, I looked at the Amazon reviews, and there was uh, some negative ones recently. And I think because Robert Martin was a little bit of a controversial figure on Twitter recently, I think those were some of the negative reviews are coming from. But when I read this, it, it made, just made a lot of sense to me. And he doesn't get into any of that stuff in his book. He just, you know, he sticks to code. And, I, you know, I like anything that can make you a better coder is, is good for me. So definitely this... Uh, really focuses on the soft skills. Now, if you thought that JavaScript, the good parts, was too old school for you and too old of a book on technology, then I would recommend to skip that book and go to You Don't Know JS, which is a, an amazing series by Kyle Simpson. He has, I think there's like 20, uh, 10 books, but one of them, I, I pictured one of them here called Scopes and Disclosures. So if you want to be good at JavaScript, 
I would highly recommend buying these books. Some of them I think you can get for free online, but a lot of them, if you want to support Kyle, which I would highly recommend, and I think you probably even get some more goodies if you, you buy the book, you can buy it on Amazon. I'll have the links below, but it, it just supports him. He's an amazing developer, and it just he really knows JavaScript really well. So buying these books I, um, is, is a good idea, and I just want to include this because I know a lot of people listening and watching right now are JavaScript or web developers, and I want to make sure that there's something you know modern, a little bit more modern for you guys if you want to learn good coding practices or really learn JavaScript in such a way that uh, you'll be better at it. So the You Don't Know JS series is pretty good. And he has, like I said, he has like five or ten, ten books maybe. And finally, I wanted to end on this book. I took, the, I actually, this was my actual book, uh, algorithms book, when I took my algorithms algorithms class in college. It's called Introduction to Algorithms Book, it, Algorithms by Thomas Corman, Charles E. Leiserman, Ronald L. Rivest, Clifford Stein. It feels like a textbook because it is a textbook, but simply, but this is a, still a very, very in-depth book, book on algorithms. It's, it's high level. It feels like a college class when you read it, and that's because a lot of colleges use this book. I know it was taught in MIT. It's taught in a few other places. So if you really want an in-depth look into algorithms, this is it. So maybe if you are new to algorithms, you start off with Gail Ackman's book, Cracking the Coding Interview, and then you dive into Introduction to Algorithms, and you read this book as the next one. So I just want to put this on there. It's usually highly recommended in most articles that list the top 10 programming books of all time. It's usually this book's on it, so I wanted to include it. And I'm going to give a bonus one just because I think I, 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 I think this is a great book. It's a fun book. It's not, it's not really like a programming book. It's not going to teach you how to be a better programmer. It's not going to teach you algorithms or design patterns. But it's just a fun book to read. And it kind of also it feels like it's a little outdated, but it is because this is the cuckoo's egg tracking a spy through the maze of computer espionage, which um, – I have the wrong, oops, I have this wrong byline here. It's actually by Cliff Stoll. And it goes back, like, he's in the, night. it's like, it takes place in the 1980s. He's like a Unix system administrator, and he finds out someone's, like, basically hacking into the, to his computer system, and he tracks them down through all these really cool techniques, um, you know, around the world. It's based on a true story. Yeah, tracking a spy through the maze of computer espionage, and it's kind of a little bit gripping. Um, and it was a New York Times bestseller. It was a pretty big deal when it came out. And I think it's really neat even reading it today. It holds up today, even though some of the technologies, you be like, whoa, they're using modems? I mean, this is 1989. So we're not, we're, this is not fast, high-speed internet, but it, it's still really interesting and, and a fun thriller book to read to this day. So I would recommend that one. And it'll be in the link in the description below. All right, so that is my 10 and bonus books of all time, 10 best programming books of all time. I want to hear what you guys think. Leave a comment below what programming books you guys are reading right now. And, uh, yeah, let me know. Thanks.